These are the main components of the self-inflating bag valve mask. Note the arrows are pointing to the face mask, the pop-off valve, the actual self-inflating bag component, the oxygen tubing, and the oxygen reservoir. The bag has two main one-way valves. When the bag is compressed, the oxygen intake valve closes and the valve to the patient opens. When the bag is released, the valve to the patient closes and the oxygen intake valve opens, allowing the bag to fill with gas from the oxygen tubing. The tubing is connected to the oxygen source and from the oxygen reservoir. The oxygen reservoir permits the bag to fill completely with oxygen, not a mixture of oxygen and room air, so that the bag valve mask can provide 100% oxygen. Correct mask fit covers the mouth and nose, not the eyes, as is demonstrated in this example. The mask is too big. Note how the correctly fitting bag covers the mouth and nose, but not the eyes. The tendency of inexperienced providers is to push down too hard in an effort to create a tight seal, and then bag excessively fast in an effort to oxygenate. This fast cadence, by not allowing adequate time for exhalation, actually makes gas exchange nearly impossible, and the exaggerated flexion of the neck causes obstruction of the airway. Note, in good bagging, the gestalt is that everything is being lifted up and back, not down, thus actually relieving any obstruction caused by the tongue and the relaxed pharyngeal anatomy. The cadence for bagging should be slower, with adequate time for exhalation. Squeeze, release, release is helpful to repeat. Textbooks recommend faster rates for smaller children. From a practical point of view, however, this cadence can be used for all ages, and such fine-tuning of the ventilatory rate is unnecessary for stabilization purposes. Note how the correctly fitting mask covers the mouth and nose, but not the eyes. This is the one-handed bagging technique called the C-clamp. The index finger and thumb form the C, which maintains a seal. The remaining fingers grasp below the jaw, the clamp, lifting the entire jaw up and back, pulling the tongue and mandibular anatomy off the posterior pharynx, thus eliminating or preventing obstruction from these structures at this level. The two-handed technique is shown here. By opening the jaw slightly and pulling forward, the obstruction is relieved. At the same time, the thumbs push down, creating a tight seal. A second provider provides the compressing of the bag. Note the entire unit is pulled up and back. This is a comparison between the one-handed and two-handed techniques. Note MRI images reveal that with two-handed jaw thrust technique, more elevation of soft tissues off the posterior pharynx can be achieved. This drawing is part of an airway poster that can be displayed in your treatment area. It serves as a visual clue for proper bag valve mask technique. Again, the exaggerated flexion of the neck causes obstruction of the airway. Note, in good bagging, the gestalt is that everything is being lifted up and back, not down, thus actually relieving any obstruction caused by the tongue and relax pharyngeal anatomy. A reminder of the cadence for bagging is included. Remember, slower with adequate time for exhalation. Squeeze, release, release.